that aren't really rocks. You see, they're actually alive. G'day everyone, Kim. And today, I'm in a very special place. It's quite unique in the world, there's only a couple like it. So this is Lake Clifton in Western Australia. Lake Clifton, Nuruk Yalgarup, is one of 10 lakes in the Yalgarup National Park, south of the Dawesville Channel and Mandra in Western Australia. Lake Clifton has the freshest water of these narrow lakes that lie parallel to the coast, and is also the furthest away from the coast. During the past million years, the periodic melting of the ice caps and subsequent changing sea levels caused the coast to shift, and it formed a series of coastal sand dunes, some of which fossilised and became limestone. After the last ice age, the sea level rose and filled the gap between the dunes, forming the lake's system. It might not look like anything special, but there are these rocks that aren't really rocks. You see, they're actually alive. These are thrombolites, rock-like structures formed by microbial colonies that precipitate the calcium carbonate, or lime, in the shallow water during photosynthesis. They are descendants of some of the earliest life forms on Earth. 600 million years ago, these ancestors produced the oxygen needed for life on land to exist today. The structures here, these modern thrombolites, are about 2,000 years old. They're similar to stromatolites that form layers compared to the bubble-like pockets of thrombolites. Thrombolites is actually from the ancient Greek thrombos, meaning clot, and lithos, meaning stone. So they form clot-like structures. During winter, there's a significant inflow of groundwater so the water levels are high compared to the end of summer when it's dried out and the thrombolites can be visible above water. This is one of the few places in the world where thrombolites still exist today, and this is in fact the largest lake-bound reef in the southern hemisphere. At the start of the path there are a lot of signs, but I stopped reading and quickly took some photos when I realised that it was in fact swarming with mozzies, since there is a swamp there. There's also some more signs along the jetty, and with the breeze, it meant that at least the mozzies weren't hanging around. So I was able to read lots of information about how the lakes formed and thrombolites, as well as some warnings about how fragile they are both physically and environmentally. Unfortunately, due to the wind and it's winter, so there's high water levels, I wasn't able to get a good close-up look at the thrombolites because of the ripples on the water. But at least there were no mozzies, so I hung around on the jetty and decided to write down some information that I'd read and make a landscapito for my nature journal page. Maybe at the end of summer I'll come back to get a close-up for when the thrombolites are above water. Have you ever seen thrombolites or stromatolites? Do you have any questions about them? Then let me know in the comments below. You can check out my previous nature journaling adventure at The Cut, which is just up the road from the thrombolites. You can see it here. And for more nature journaling videos like this, remember to give this video a like and subscribe. Thank you.